All right. Good afternoon, everybody. How's everybody doing? Welcome <clears throat> to Virtual Coffee Break with Tanisha. I have an amazing uh, topic for you today. Today, we're going to discuss how to become a professional inviter with your warm market. Today, we're going to take it to the warm market. So last week, we learned how to professionally invite for our cold market. Um, but today we're going to talk about the warm market. And so I want everyone to take some notes. Well, we already know note takers are money makers, right? We already know that. So, but here's what we're going to start with. <clears throat> First, I want you to understand as a planet marketing rep, and this is applicable to any network marketing business. Your role as a marketing rep is to find people that are open to looking at ways to earn additional streams of income outside of what they currently do. So I need y'all to write that down. Your role as a marketing rep is to look for people who are open to making additional streams of income outside of what they currently do. Don't that sound simple? Like, oh, that's all I gotta do? Yes. Notice I did not say your role is to sell them a travel agency. Uh-oh, uh-oh, who's been doing that? Who's been trying to sell travel agencies? Just type guilty in the chat if that's you. <laughs> Thank you, Benita. Thank you, I appreciate that. Anybody else guilty of trying to sell travel agencies? Be honest. I used to. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Shamika. Anybody else guilty of trying to sell travel agencies? Because if you understand this, it's going to be a game changer for your business. Oh, look at all the guilties. Oh my gosh. Okay. Thank you, Shawnee, Kimberly, Rochelle, Delta, Beverly. Thank you, y'all, for being honest. I'm telling you, this, this may be my most, I probably have done 80 training videos or close to it. This is probably going to be the most important out of all of them. Because if you get this, this is how you're going to be able to start MTG, moving the genealogy, meaning you are selling ITAs. We don't want to sell the travel agency. That's a salesperson. What we want to do is find people that are open to looking at ways to earn additional streams of income. So make sure y'all write that down, understand it understand it, overstand it, make sure you get that. Because just changing your mindset on what you do is going to change your entire business. All right. Now, write this down. Find the need and meet it. Find the hurt and heal it. Find the problem and solve it. Identify their nightmare and sell them their dream. Find the need and meet it. Find the hurt and heal it. Find the problem and solve it. Identify their nightmare and sell them their dream. So when you hear me say, and I want to go to someone who put that they were guilty of trying to sell a travel agency. Let's go to you, Beverly. 
when you hear me say find the need and meet it, find the hurt and heal it, find the problem and solve it, identify their nightmare and sell them the dream, what comes to your mind, Beverly, when you hear that as someone who was trying to sell travel agencies? Well, when I was trying to sell the travel agencies, what, come, what was coming to my mind was it was all about me, uh, what I wanted. I wanted to move the genealogy. I wanted what I wanted. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't trying to take it from their perspective. Mm -hmm. So that is what came up for me. Um, I'm going to just go to your, uh, just as peak interest 2.0. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when I learned, you know, how to properly peak the interest and I start using what was given to me in the training, it started making a difference because now I can think about the person and I can hear where they are. I can hear if there's a need. Mm -hmm. I can hear, you know, if this person loves to travel, I can see that they love to travel, mm -hmm. but I have a different way to approach it and make it come from what they're looking for and not make it about me. Exactly, exactly. The other piece to this is too many people are trying to lead with travel instead of leading with the business. And that's because travel, it's a fun conversation. I don't know what that was outside of my house. Sorry. Y'all heard that? That crash? I'm like, what the heck? That scared me. Even my dog freaked out. <laughs> Sorry about that. All right. So again, um, too many people are leading with travel because it's an easy conversation but even with travel let's say you just you know someone who travels um they're always on a trip or whatever and you say oh no i'm you know they're they're a big traveler what are the two reasons that people who love to travel why they don't travel as much as they would like to no money and no time time yeah right so would you agree and y'all just type i agree in the chat if you agree with this statement would you agree that if someone wanted to travel more that they don't really need us they, they if they wanted to travel more wouldn't they just go on one of those online websites they'd be on a trip you wouldn't even have access to them so people don't need us to travel more. If they had the money and they had the time, they would just they would just be gone, right? So those aren't the people that we're speaking to, right? We're speaking to the people who need more income so that they could do whatever they want to do. And so when you are identifying someone that you see that's traveling a lot and you're like, oh, this, this business will be great for you because you know, you're know you already traveling. Do you realize you're telling another adult how they should be spending their money? When you have no clue what's going on in their household and they, be, they may be facing a child going to college that's going to cost $40,000 for the year. And then you over here talking about, you should join this business because, you know, I see you travel and it'll help you save on travel. When traveling is the furthest thing from their mind, what's really on their mind is that $40,000 tuition bill that they got to come up with. And so guess what that person will probably say to you when you say, oh, you know, you should really do this business because, you know, I see you travel a lot and this can help you save on your travel. They already going to say no because they're not thinking about travel. Yeah, they love to travel and all that, but what they're really thinking about is that $40,000 tuition bill. Y'all get that? That's why you never, ever want to lead with travel. Miss Delta, I see your hand up. Yes, I, I, I wanted to um, say that's what I was doing. I was doing, because I, I thought, ooh, I'm falling. Um, I thought um, by leading with the travel, 
that's the interest that's the that's the hook it's like you know using the travel as as to 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 hook them into you know becoming a part of the business and doing that and now it's like i'm reassessing and re you know generating you know my mindset and being able to come at them different like you say meeting them wherever they are in their life i'm i'm redoing it different now you know and, and making it not about myself but making it about them because that's more important like you said i don't want to come across it's like you said i don't know what's going on. i don't know what what they have in their pocket so you know why should i come across and being that way so thanks to to my 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 coach um my my senior partner is helping me to you know reevaluate and how i come across to be able to um uh, come across to the prospect in, 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 a, in a, uh, a better, in a different direction. So yeah, I was doing that, definitely. Good, good. Thank you, Delta. Kim? Hey, Kim. Hey. <laughs> I was going to say that uh, what I'm realizing now is that um, travel is, is limited, although that's what our uh, business is, is limited. And that when you talk about the herd, talk about the problems, talk about their dreams, it opens the door to build a rapport so that if they were to say no that first time later on down the line, they may say yes, as opposed to saying travel and they say, nope, I don't need travel. And then that no becomes, you know, permanent. Mm -hmm. So I guess I'm saying that, that no can change if you sell them, you know, the heart, I mean, the hurt, the pain, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And that, um, you know, covers all aspects of life rather than just one aspect of life, which is travel. Exactly, exactly. And so we have what, 27 people on right now. Let's do, let's do a quick poll. How many of you, as far as priorities in your life right now, it's August 8th, is your priority today would it be on booking a trip or paying a bill? Just type in the chat, which one is your priority for you today? Booking a trip or paying a bill? Some bill, whatever bill you may have, I don't know. I don't know what's going on in your household. I want everybody to respond. And I want y'all to look at the chat. Not one single person said that their priority is to take a trip right now. Not one person. So Ms. Gail, what does that tell you? That out of 27 people, the priority in their life is to pay a bill and not to take a trip that our need is much more stronger than travel. You know, when I think I can speak for a lot of us, when we came in the business, all we saw was travel, you know, cause we're kind of, we was kind of led by travel, but, but it's much more deeper than travel. But when we sit back, like now we sit back and I'm like, wow, you got a whole new, out, a whole new outlook on it. It's not about just to travel no more. You know, it's finding that need for people. Exactly. Exactly. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you, Gail. Mm -hmm. Shamika? I was going to say, this made me think about um, when I first got started in the business. I initially was looking for a trip, which I don't know where I was going, y'all, because I was eight months pregnant. <laughs> But I just thank God because Candace could have booked that trip for me and that just could have been it. When in our actuality, I needed the money. I didn't need to go on a trip. And then when I think about it, the trip that I reached out to Candace for, I never took it. I never even went on to that trip. So that was that was just like an eye opener to me. Like, okay, Shamika, travel is the one that introduced you into it, but it's mm -hmm. way way bigger than that with the, with the mm -hmm. things that you have access to the people that you have access to so um it's just making me think about the beginning of when i got started and how i should be talking to people and really understanding that yes they would rather pay a bill than go on a trip right that's 
So there's a difference between reality and then what you wish for, <laughs> right? And so because we are all bills are residual, we wish we could be on a tropical island somewhere instead of paying these bills. But the reality is we got to pay these bills. <laughs> That's the reality. And so even the reason why people want to take the trip is because they need, they want to escape <laughs> their reality of adulting. Right. But we're not here for that. Right. We're here to help them deal with the reality so that traveling whenever they want to becomes part of their reality. But we got to help them make the money first. And that's why you'll often hear Mr. Bradley say, stop telling grown people how to spend their money. Come on, you need to join this business so you could travel more. No, they need to join this business so that they can put their bills on auto pay. Let's do that. Shouldn't that come first? So we have got to get out of leading with this travel thing. Because that's not, excuse me, that's not having the serious, I can change your life conversation with people. And that's the time for conversation you should be having with people. I can change your life. Changing someone's life is not sending them on, on a carnival cruise. That's a one and done. And when you look at the successful people in this business, and here's, here's the other part, because everything needs to add up, right? So some of y'all are leading with the travel and where's the evidence of the lifestyle change with booking travel? So if you look at, here's what I mean. Let's take Natalie Graham. Love, love, love Natalie Graham. Someone who was wildly successful in this business who, and I'm using her as an example, because she does an amazing job at showcasing how this business has changed her life, right? She, we know she built a house. We know she got a, 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 a vacation home in Cabo, right? Because she shared that on social media, right? His and her luxury vehicles, right? She shows that. But here's my question to all of you, and I want you to type it in the chat. Which side of the business provided that? Intellitravel or Planet Marketing? Type it in the chat. What's the question I just got here? Sorry. <laughs> I said, Natalie Graham does an amazing job of showcasing how this business has changed her life, elevated her lifestyle right? She shares that, you know, when she buys something, whatever, she shows that. But my question to everyone is what side of the business provided that for her? Is it the IntelliTravel side or the planet marketing side? Right? So all of you are saying planet marketing. If that's the case, then why do you keep talking about travel, saving on travel? You see what I'm saying? The two don't add up. Beverly, what are your thoughts on that? Wow. Uh, you know, I was just sitting here just thinking, you know, when I first came here, that was something that just wasn't clear. You have to really, my thoughts, is if you plug in, you're going to know more. You're going to understand. And one thing that um, Mr. Donald Bradley says, and I, I, I have this on my board, so I look at it every day. He says, I only do one thing. That is, I help people make long-term sustainable income, which is measured by our co company's comp plan. Mm -hmm. So that's what I do. And I cannot do that by taking a trip. You know, I, I, I personally had to 
um, make some changes, trying to go on some trips, trying to go to Intella uh, Quest. There's nothing wrong with Intella Quest. I love it. I think they do a phenomenal job with that. But my focus is if I am to make long-term sustainable income, I got to focus where the income is. And the opportunity to do that is now. And the other thing I love that he says, I help people supplement their income and their lifestyle, period. So when people ask me, what did I do? That's what I do. That's what I I just typed it, Constance. (laughs) Chanel? Hey, director, I was trying to meet myself. I'm sorry. So I have a, it's, it's answering the question, but it's not answering the question, if that makes sense. So um, to, to that point, I've heard, you know, different people say, you know, like be a product of the, of the, of the product. And mm-hmm. so, of course, sometimes when you do show that you're, you know, you're traveling and you're here and there and we should be like, oh, you know, I do all my own type of business. And it's, it's like, it turns into like, like you are almost leading with travel because, well, hey, I want to go here or go there. So I think my brain has been kind of stuck in a green, in an analytical, like to really separate the two. And then it's kind of like, you know, when you do see people travel, like, hey, how are you booking your trips? You know, you know, have you, you know, considered, you know, putting yourself uh, to be an entrepreneur in the travel industry? I mean, so I, that's where I've been like in the mud at. Okay, let me, I'm gonna help you with that. <clears throat> yes, as Intelli Travel advisors, we have access to wholesale rates, discounted rates. Do we get to travel for free? Just answer in the chat. Do we get to travel for free? You still have to pay. So whether your trip is $1,500 or $500, the, the, the amount of money we pay for the trip is irrelevant. You still have to be able to afford to go on that trip. And if, if let's say, a, a trip to Jamaica, right? That fam trip to Jamaica was $99. I went on that trip, right? The average cost to stay at that hotel is over $500 per night. So retail for that trip, over $2,000. I got to pay 99 but guess what? I still had to book the flights. You think the flights were $99 to get from Florida to Jamaica? Right? So at the end of the day, let's say with the flights, let's say the trip was $800 versus $2,800. But let's say I'm that person who has two kids in college. It don't matter whether I'm paying 800 or 2,800. The trip is not the priority. So it's like the amount of money we pay to go on the trips is irrelevant if you have an issue with money. If you are struggling to keep your lights on, it don't matter that you're able to get discount trips over here. You can't take them anyway. We don't get discounts on flights. Nobody does. Just keeping it real, you still got to get to the destination. I don't care if the hotel is $25 a night. You still got to pay to get there. And if if that person is struggling to keep their lights on, they keep having to put something on it, I'm talking to the people who've been where I've been. There were years when I could never pay my light bill in full. I had to put something on it. Just enough for them to not cut cut it off. Can anybody relate to that? You know, there's a lot of people going through that right now. It's like over 100 degrees here in Florida. I got a chat 
um, for my community, there's people with four and five and six and seven and eight hundred dollar electric bills. So do you think that's the priority or the fact that, oh, I could take a trip to Jamaica and stay for ninety nine dollars or eight hundred if you include the flights? I'm just trying to get y'all to focus on the main thing. At the end of the day, I don't care what it is. It comes down to the money. It's not about the trip. It's about the money. And so Chanel, yes, we want to be a product of our product. But the reason you're able to go on that $99 trip to Jamaica is because you have a business that allows you to earn income so that you can take care of your household expenses, which then allows you to be able to take the trip. Because honestly speaking, how many of you that are on right now, honestly speaking, if IntelliTravel was offering a trip for $100 to Spain for four nights, not Spain. Let's let, let's do this. Intellitravel's offering a trip to the UK for four nights for a hundred dollars. And thinking about all of the expenses that are included, because you still gotta get your flight. You still gotta eat. How many of you could afford to book it right now? Honestly. Just type in the chat, I could afford it right now. Today, like you only had until midnight to book it. You see the note, not me, not me. But wait, Chanel, it's, it's $100. It's in the business, it's only $100 for us. There's more things that are pressing in people's life, even though that is an amazing deal. There's more important things in people's lives over that. And that is an amazing deal. But the flights, that's what canceled it for them because they're like, it's like $1,500 or more for round trip flights to the UK. Chanel, does that help you? Yes, it really does. That was out of me. Like, yeah, I got the hundred dollars, but I don't. I can't afford the rest of the trip, though. So I can't. I wouldn't be going. <laughs> right. So we have got to stop telling people you should join this business so you could travel. It's not about that. It's about making money so that they could do whatever they need to do with that money, which might be pay that six hundred dollar electric bill. Screw a $99 trip to the UK. I need to pay the electric bill off. How many of you have student loan debt? I mean, isn't it a priority for a lot of people? They sick and tired of carrying that student loan debt from year to year to year to year. They want to get that monkey off their back. They ain't even working in what they went to school for. It, shouldn't that be the priority of take overtaking a $99 trip to the UK? What do you think they'd rather do? Take the trip to the UK or, or finally be done with paying the student loans? Not about the trip. Shamika? I was just going to read a question that um, Zara had before it get kind of lost in the sauce. She asked, um, what is the best way to go about selling a dream? Can you give an example of role play? Absolutely. Okay, Miss Zara, come off mute. All right. I knew, I knew it was. <laughs> now this is going to be good. So Miss Zara, let me ask you a question. What is your nightmare? Well, my nightmare is basically I want to move to a single story 
home um, instead of being in the two-story home because of health reasons. Okay. At so, this time. Okay. I can understand that a lot because my mom was living in a second floor apartment and between her health and my stepdad's health, they don't know how they would have been able to keep living in a second floor apartment. So if I know that that's her nightmare, I'm going to say, Zara, I know that, you know, you've been dealing with some health challenges and you got this, you know, this two floor house. If I could show you how to make some additional income from home so that you can move to a single level home, is that something you'd be open to taking a look at? Yes. Was that simple? I have to know her nightmare in order to sell her to drink. No, I say a darn thing about travel. Because it's not about that. I didn't even say anything about selling travel agencies, did I? Because it's not about that either. We could be selling bling bling coffee mugs. And all Ms. Zara is going to want to know is, Tanisha, how many of those do I need to sell so that I can move into a single floor home and, you know, have my health challenges be a little bit easier to deal with. We could be selling paper clips, potato chip clips, whatever. All she's gonna wanna know is how many of those do I need to sell so I can move to a single floor home? Ms. Zara? So, um, but in order to get to that point, that's the point part of Ooh, you're cutting out to like get... trying to friend them and form them it's is, called building rapport that, like how do you approach them it's called building rapport you got to build rapport I'm, with them i'm gonna type them okay hold on You got to build rapport. We build rapport, expose, and close. So when you build rapport, it's, it's getting to know someone so that you can find out, you know, a little bit more about them and how you can pique them because they're going to share, right? But remember that the topic for this is your warm market. This, these are your family. These are your friends. These are your classmates. You know these people. So Zara, if you're working in your warm market, you kind of already know what the needs are. You know which family members have kids. Well, if you have kids, don't you need income? Right? Kids are expensive. They want stuff. They eat a lot. <laughs> They want to play sports. There's registration fees for those sports. They want to go on class trips. They don't want the $20 sneakers from Walmart. Right? So Zara, even just um, piquing the interest of your family members who you know have children, whether they're young kids or in college, hey, if I could show you how to earn some extra income from home, to help pay cash for college or, you know, the sports for your kids or whatever. Is that something you'd be open to taking a look at? This is your warm market. You already know what the needs are. These are this is not the stranger you met in public. This is not the stranger on Facebook. Today, we're talking about warm market, the people you know, your sister, your brother, that you have not shared this business with yet. And the question is why? You know your brother's working two jobs. Why haven't you shared the business with your brother? If he's working two jobs, that's the peak. Bro, listen, I know you've been working two jobs for over five years now. And to be honest with you, two jobs are for two people. Nobody should have to work two jobs. If I could show you how to earn some additional income from home so you can quit that second job and have more time with your family, is that something you'd be open to taking a look at? What is the brother going to say? Does anybody think in that scenario, the brother would say no? Your brother, do you think he would say no? 
Who would say yes to that? Anybody who's not mentally challenged, who would say no? Nobody. I promise you, no one will say no to something that's in their own best interest. So with your warm market, it's so much easier to work in your warm market because you don't have to build rapport with them. <laughs> you don't have to build rapport with your auntie. That's your aunt. You know her. You know what she got going on. How about those, those family members who have health challenges? We all have them. They're always going to, they got a doctor's appointment every week for something. They got tons of pill bottles on all types of meds. Y'all know they got co-pays? Hey, auntie, listen, I, you know, I know you got a lot going on, you know, doctor's appointments and stuff like that. And, and I know, it could, you know, med medical, medical care is expensive. If I could show you a way to make some additional income from home to help cover your medical expenses as you deal with these challenges, is that something you'd be open to taking a look at? Is she going to say no? She's going to at least look. Karen? Um, okay, so um, yes. Your family, you have rapport with them, you know them, they know you, and they know you what you've been doing. If you've been in this for a while, they know that you know it's travel. So what do you do about the the family members that when you do come the way you're saying now that you're meeting their need and you're doing what's best interest, then they say, Well, are you talking about that travel thing that you do? I don't want to do that. But I mean, how, I mean, because I've been in network marketing for a long, and my family knows everything I do. And I do have, I have a nephew that's working two jobs and, and I have, I have family members that are, you know, have recovery, but they have the, I know their nightmares. I'm half of their nightmares. I've lived it with them, but I'm not in that nightmare anymore because I'm in this business, but they just, and it, maybe it's because of me, or I don't know if other people feel that way, because I mean, our family, I know you said it's the easiest, but to me, the family is the hardest because I have more more successful people that don't know me than my family who know me. And they know they they saw me walk off my job last year because of this business. Mm -hmm. But they just don't. I don't know. You just I, I take them off the market. Say, you know what? I understand it may not be for you right now. But one thing I can guarantee is that you're going to hear about this business from somebody else at some point. Mm -hmm. And if and whenever you decide you're ready to get into this business to help you meet your needs, make sure you come back to me because I exposed you first. And that, and then you're done. Does that make sense, Karen? So it's just taking them off that, the market. That makes total sense because I'm I'm really like I kind of already kind of just took them off, but yeah, I, I like that. And yeah, I, you got to keep the door I, open. Yeah, That's key. keep the door open. Y'all get mad. <laughs> Y'all get real mad when your family tell you no. You ready to disown them. <laughs> Don't do that. I'm not going to do that. Don't do I that. I have <laughs> at the time, Sunita, right? Dr. Burke, I have been saying that to some of the, the closer ones that, listen, we're at 95,000 now because you're going you're gonna to be hearing about this because we're at 95,000 mm -hmm. and, and somebody's going to mention it to you. I just remember that I'm in this and I told it to you first. Just remember because I, it, it, it's, it's, it's inevitable. It's becoming a household name now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I had one of my um, business partners that was in the business so, told me her cousin who lives in Florida, she lives in Detroit, her cousin lives in Florida, invited her to a Zoom meeting. She got on Zoom meeting and said, I'm already in this. I'm just on credit hold. Let me go back to Karen and, and get off credit hold because this is, this is good. <laughs> so mm -hmm. it's out there. With your family, Again, it's just about taking them off the market. Friends and family won't support you until strangers start to celebrate you. I had my cousin join this business years ago. Maybe it wasn't the right time for her. She quit. Here we are several years later. 
I went back to her. I was like, cuz, I can't let you miss this, like, for real. So she's joined again, and I'm so happy about that. And we did her first launch. And one of the things that she repeatedly said to her guests, and, and it's like, I felt it in my spirit when she said it. She said, y'all, I've watched her blow up in this business. I've watched it. Like she kept stressing the fact that she has watched me blow up in this business while she's struggling and trying to get out of this job. Like I felt it when she, and she said it repeatedly because she wanted her guests to understand this is not some random person I just met. Um, this is my blood. This is my cousin. And I've watched her and her husband. I watched them walk out of their job. I watched them buy new vehicles. I watched them buy two houses. I've watched them do this. Your family, they're watching you. And sometimes your family is just going to be that your family. I got another question I want y'all to answer in the chat. And I already know today we're going to go over because I didn't even get to some of the stuff I want to share with you. Um, so if you have to jump off at one, that's fine. But I'm going to keep going. Um, I want y'all to put in the chat. And Rochelle, I'm going to address uh, what you just said in a second. Um, and also Shamika, I see that. Name one person this is going to help y'all. Y'all going to love this one. And I want everybody to answer. Name one person that you know that has become wildly successful off of their family. I'll wait. Who, 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 who? Exactly, no one. So why are you so upset when they say no? I mean, you so upset, you don't even want to talk to anybody else about the business. Who just had an aha moment? Honestly. Delta, talk about it. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay, I'm laughing hysterically, basically at myself, but everything you said, oh my God, is just resonating. It's just, it's just exploding in my brain. I, I'm, gl I'm glad to hear you say, don't write your family off, because I, 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 they, they gone. I'm, I, I ain't got time. It's like, how can you not see this? Just going through the whole thing, but how can I see it? relearning and reteaching yourself, you know, how to, how to, now I know now to, you know, keep them warm. But as my mother, uh, to use a prayer of my mother, used to say, feed them out of long, have a spoon. So now instead of erasing them totally, I'm going to put, you know, extend that, that long handle spoon and just keep them back there and then keep doing what I need to do. Keep moving forward and, and, and doing what I need to do. And in that way, They'll see through my actions. Exactly. You got it. How I'm moving forward and what I'm doing. You know, not trying to, you know, wrangle them up and say, okay, you know, shake it into them, you know, listen. Just just do what I gotta do, move forward. And 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 as as, as my mother would say, the proof is in the pudding. Exactly. Let's let me say this. Your family, most of them are just gonna be witnesses. Yep. And that's okay. Let them be the witness because then they'll be the ones who refer people to you. Mm -hmm. they're hum they, they may let their pride stop them from coming back to you once you start making six figures, right? Their pride just because they're going to be mad at themselves because they didn't say yes when you first brought it to them. Mm -hmm. But they still may refer people to you, right? 
Shamika, and then Beverly, and then Shani. Thank you, Delta. I just wanted to say that I was the one that thought my whole family was going to join when I first came in. I'm like, oh, my mama, she traveled, my daddy, my sister. That is not the not the case um and i just want to help somebody out because when i was inviting my warm market i used to get told hey come on to support me you know come on and support and you know see what i got going on and i had to stop doing that because i found that they'll come on to support they'll listen they'll ask questions in the chat but then it's time for the three-way call they don't answer or they send me a text like hey cuz i'm proud of you but it's not for me so I had to stop using that support um, thing. And I think um, Director J.P. Watkins just kind of um, touched on that a little bit on either, I think it was basic training or IMB or even one. And then another thing I had to realize is while I do want all my family members, I would love for them to take a serious, you know, stab at this opportunity. I don't want everybody in my business. I'm sorry. You know, little Pook Pook and little Ray Ray act a fool when you go outside. So why would you want them in your business? So I had to come to their realization. I don't want all my family in my business. I'm sorry, it's just not for them. Um, and then I did what you told us to do a while ago. I sent my Noah's Ark video. That's what I call it, my Noah's Ark video. I sent them a last minute video, 30 seconds. I think I played it for you. Just saying, hey, this is my, you know, I'm, I'm shaking and moving. This is what this business is about to afford me. I'm, this is my last time reaching out to you to see, you know, if now is a serious time for you to look at it. If not, I still love you, right? We still going to be cousins, sisters, brothers, but I'm not going to be able to attend those parties, those funerals, those whatever y'all got going on because I have some aggressive goals. And so I had to send that final raft video. So some of y'all might need to have that final raft conversation too. And then another thing that I started doing too with, um, because I know we have those peak posts, you know, if I could show you how to book travel and get paid, would you? I had to start doing intro calls. I wouldn't now, if this your first, you know, week, two weeks in business, I wouldn't have asked you to do this, but intro calls, I was able to just get to know that person and they get to know me. The conversation did not last more than three minutes because I'm not explaining the business to them. I'm simply learning about them. And then once they tell me about them, I know how to invite them and say, you know, I know you saw this um, travel opportunity with my post, but listen, let me tell you, it's so much bigger than travel. I heard you said that you have two kids and you want to stay home from your nursing job. This opportunity, this is a the opportunity for you uh, to do that. So, you know, can I invite you to such and such to watch the video, da 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 And that's how I had to do it, as opposed to doing the bait and switch. So yes. that's what Don't I Don't do that's... the bait and switch. <laughs> I you used know to what do... bait and switch is? Some of y'all don't know. I'm going to tell y'all just in case, just in case you don't know. Bait and switch is when you do a post and it's all about the travel side. You talking about, you know, making money, booking travel, this, that, and the other. And then you, let's say they join the business, right? Because you got them. They're like, oh, yes, I love travel. I book for my family or whatever. And then they come in the business and they just want to focus on booking travel. But now you're trying to get them to build the business. Now you want them all in on the planet marketing side, but that's not what you showed them. You didn't show them the bigger picture of how planet marketing can generate seven streams of income and help them leave a legacy for their family. That's not what sold them on the business. You ain't even mentioned that. You were just so happy that they said yes immediately because of the travel. You're like, they said, yes, let me not mess this up. Let me get them in. And then now they in and you mad because they don't want to build. Well, you didn't cast the bigger vision about the marketing side. You sold them on one side. That's what they're doing. And now you're trying to get them to do something that they know nothing about. And they didn't make their decision upon. So don't do the bait and switch. And again, if you, if y'all join late, go back and watch the beginning of this video because we talked about at the end of the day, it's about the money. And if y'all can just have that mindset shift about that part, you'll always say the right thing. Beverly and then Shani. Oh, thank you for this call this zoom um what i wanted to share and i hopefully this will help somebody it took me a long time to come into this business now 
Uh, Carla and Greg Scott are my dear friends. Carla and I were college roommates. And I watched them. I watched them for years. I watched them for years. I did not make a move until Carla quit her job. And when she posted that on Facebook now, oh, they were, they were the evidence. I saw the change, but I was not making a move because I was like, okay, I'm over here doing this. I'm okay. I, I was trying everything else. I'm going to make my own way. But when Carla quit that job, I called her up because that was my evidence. I said, what is going on? Because see, me, I move around on jobs. Carla don't move around on jobs. She's, she's very uh, meticulous. She don't switch jobs. So when she changed, when she quit that job, I really started paying attention on Facebook. I was watching every move she made. I was watching when she took care of her dad. She went down and redid his home. I was, I saw those posts and, you know, and she was there for him when he passed. And then when she started traveling, I finally said, let me get, let me put my pride aside and make this phone call. And I said, when are y'all coming to Atlanta? And when they got here, it wasn't about, I needed to know all this. All I needed to know was, here's my credit card. Can I get started now? Because I was like, I'd have made, I'd have missed this too long. Let me jump in. And I'm going to tell you, I watched during the pandemic. I have never seen what I saw in the pandemic. I watched directors. I saw them leveling up. I saw Greg and Carl level up. I saw Tanisha Burke level up. And her husband, I saw uh, uh, Melanie White. I saw what they were doing. I'm like, how is this happening in the middle of a pandemic? And so... The evidence, I didn't, I didn't need to say anything. They didn't say anything. I saw it for myself. So see, I'm here for that reason. Now, let me tell you. So when my family don't, I let my family, I let people just watch me on Facebook because I know they watching me, but I had to have my process. I had to have my process because when I got here, I still got to go through my process. My process, my self process. And Tanisha can tell you my process ain't been pretty. You know, I had fumbled, stumbled, you know, not know what I was doing trying because you know I came here with other ideas from other places that if this is totally different I got to wipe the slate clean you know as we say have that empty cup so that it can be filled up but now I know that I, if I plug in if I listen if I am a coachable if I got them 14 pillars operating in my life if I let somebody help me because they know it and I don't know it then slowly my process is going to start. It's going to start showing up for me. The process is the process, but my process is my process. And so that is what has really made a difference for me in knowing that I had to really embrace, embrace that. Now I'm all, I'm all in. You, get, you can't tell me. And when people call me talking about something else, I don't even want to hear it. I just shut them down kindly and I keep it moving. But I stay, and I, then I stay at the drama because this business is the business that's gone. This is the vehicle for me. Mm -hmm. And so the vehicle ain't for everybody, but the vehicle is for some people. And some people are gonna watch you. Some people gonna come along later. They're gonna remember us. They're gonna come along later. But I guarantee you, they're watching us. So mm -hmm. don't get discouraged. They are watching because I was one of those who was really watching. So that's what I wanted to share. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Beverly. I want y'all to write this down. Dad, as soon as I said it, I just forgot it. <laughs> oh, I know what I was going to say. Write this down. Once they see it, they can't unsee it. Once they see it, they can't unsee it. Your family members, they saw the big picture video or they got on a webinar or even they've seen you level up have success, you change your zip code, you driving a different car, you traveling. Once they witnessed it, they don't forget it, I promise you. So it's not like you have to keep going back to them. You ready yet? You ready yet? You ready? They watching. Just like my cousin said, I've watched her do this. I've watched her blow up in this business. And I see my other cousins liking my posts. So if they were really ready for a change, like really ready to like, okay, I'm sick and tired of struck. I want to ask you, because tell me about this thing you're doing, because I've been watching you. 
ready. They're, they're just not ready. And to Rochelle's point, Rochelle put the challenges. Some of us are going to our warm market with several opportunities. And so now the family basically is waiting on success first. I guess when they hear it from someone else, they'll come back. And that's true. You know, you did Mary Kay, you were trying to get them in Mary Kay. Then you moved on to Amway, then you're trying to get them in Amway. Then you went on to TLC, you're trying to get them in TLC. Then you went to Paparazzi, you were trying to get them in Paparazzi. Now you're doing this and you're trying to get them in this. And your family's like, here they go with another thing. It's okay. I don't look at that as a bad thing. Again, it's all about your perception and how you look at it. I look at it as this person is hungry to change their life and they ain't gonna stop until they get it right. That's how I look at it. And again, you just gotta watch them. Let them watch you. And when they see you have a certain level of success and that you're being consistent, here's the other reason why your family's not coming to you because you, you've never even stayed consistent in those businesses. You did it for a little while and then you stopped. You didn't do, because every last one of those businesses, you could be successful in it as long as you don't quit. Every last one of them. But you quit. Maybe you decided it wasn't the right fit for you. But guess what? Use that as part of your story when you're talking to your family and turn it into a positive. Say, you know what? I, I'm sick and I've been sick and tired of being sick and tired, struggling. And I've been trying different opportunities, trying to find the right fit for me. I've tried this, I've tried that. I didn't let any of them discourage me. I just realized you know, once I got in it, it wasn't the right fit for me. But this, oh yeah, I found it. I ain't got to deal with no inventories. My my residual is not based on people buying stuff. Inven you know, sales volume. The support and the training is way better than anything I ever encountered in those. This, this business can't even compare to any of those. Give me 30 days to show you. And if it's not for you, you can quit and get all your money back. Isn't that much? You see how I turned the fact that you were in this multiple things, how I turned that into a positive? Because I've done multiple things before. I've had other opportunities. And I just say, I've done Mary Kay. But I tell them why it wasn't a good fit. I said, you know what? I tried Mary Kay coming out of high school. Great company great products but guess what I was coming out of high school I didn't wear makeup and I didn't do skincare I had great skin so that company wasn't a good fit for me went on the Amway again another great company amazing products but you know it's so hard to change people's buying habits if you grew up on tide it's hard for me to get you to switch to Amway laundry detergent not a good fit for me then I moved on to health and wellness Again, great company, great products, but you know, people only focus on their health for about three months, <laughs> January, February, March. Not a good fit for me. I said, but then when I found this travel business, number one, people travel all year round. So it's not seasonal. Number two, I don't have no inventory, no sales quotas. There's no sales volume that I have that's tied to my money. And I don't have to change anybody's buying habits. If they only fly jet blue, they get to fly jet blue. But more importantly, the training, unmatched. Unmatched. The training, the leadership, the support, everything I need to be successful is there. I finally found my home. Shamika? We can let Constance go. She had her hand up for a while. Okay, Constance. Thank you. Hi y'all. Okay, um, going back to the um, what this business can do for you because y'all not haven't really traveled. So what I've been posting on Facebook is how my property looks and stuff like that. I think I mentioned this before. My show how my property looks and everything. So now that I have gotten some work done, I'm telling people because a lot of people ask me, "Well, I have your job. Where have you gone?" So I said, "This is where I'm putting my money to." 
My, I've already had my house. Now I'm making my house look pretty the way I want it to. I'm working on my landscaping. That's where my money is going to. Now, if you want to travel, I can help you with that. If you want to have something to do with, you know, getting your car fixed, getting, you know, some in, extra income and things like that, this business will also help you with that. But y'all see, since I've been in this business, I have been getting some props and work done on my property. So that's how I explain to them about the money. Mm -hmm. And then back with my family, my sister, um, my aunt had passed away and left us some insurance money, right? And she's like, see, so I had posted on Facebook when I got my um, porch fixed. This is what my money for my business is helping me do, has helped me do, right? That's she posted, it. she posted, and oh, also the insurance money from auntie. I said, and I posted in her same remote so everybody can see, no, that helped me with my car payment. My business helped me with my property, <laughs> with my home renovation improvements. There you go. She said, oh, she said, oh, well, let me mind my business. I exactly. said, thank you. <laughs> exactly. Said, thank you see you. how the family do? That's why you don't want your family <laughs> in your business. Let them just stay family. Thank you for sharing that. Mm -hmm. And that's what you do. You have got to be traveling. Again, get away from the travel. That is not the only way to show what this business can do. She's able to get some landscaping done in her house. And when she posts about it, I'm so thankful for my planet marketing business because it's allowing me to pay to get this landscaping done. She got to be on the, the beaches of Jamaica to show that this business is working. No, her priority is her home, improving her home. And that's where she's putting her money. So who, who am I to say, oh, Constance, you need to join this business so you can you know, save on your travel when her priority is improving her investment, her home. Exactly. I want to come home to, I'm going on a beach. I want to come home to a nice house. Oh, yes. You know, not a broken porch, not, you know, crazy crabgrass and stuff growing around. So I'm going to have my butterfly garden and my planet marketing butterflies flying around. <laughs> there you go. Right. So I want y'all to correct your downline who stay on a trip. Right? They try to tell you that they take all these trips because that attracts people to the business. Set them straight on that. And say, so does paying off your debt. And my credit score went up. <laughs> credit score, right? From, so does from improving your credit score. That attracts people too. Paying your car off. That will attract people to the business too. Paying cash for Christmas, that will attract people too. Putting your bills on auto pay, that will attract people too. Stop letting people tell you that the only way to attract people to this business, our business, is by them going on a, a, a fam trip every other month. Does that attract people? Yeah, but there's a lot of other things in this economy that we're living in where people's grocery bills have doubled, where people's um, gasoline for their car has doubled. Like, talk about those things, Shamika, and then divorce. Um, I just want to say I'm gonna help somebody out because um, in the beginning, you know how you like, okay, this is my cousin, this is my sister. I can tell her, I can talk to her about the business. Stop talking. Stop talking to your family and thinking you're gonna tell them the whole. You talk yourself right out of business, partner, because I, I pretty much believe that I have talked myself out of several business partners. So I think we need to leverage more when it comes to our family because they don't know me, Shamika alone as the business owner just yet. They know me as Mika Loa, the cousin. They like to laugh and make everybody laugh and stuff. So you really have to get out of your way when it comes to people that you know. And what I have found when they when they have those life changing conversations, you know, with the three way calls, you end up hearing some stuff that you didn't even know was going on in the household. You like you just smiling and laughing. I didn't know that you your life was about to get cut off. So stop talking so much. Just leverage your leaders, leverage the video. And I'm telling y'all this from my own personal experience because I talk too much. And even when I first got into the business, I think about the the um, story in the book about the man who was so excited that he went home and told his wife and she was like, Mark, are, are you serious right now? <laughs> so you kind of have to do that. You know, you may be excited and you really on edge or whatever, but you really have to 
show the plan. You have to let that video, let the webinar, let the leader speak in place of that because you you end up talking too much. So yeah. I had yeah. to come to that realization to okay. shut my mouth and get myself out of the way. Exactly. Leverage, leverage, leverage. Divorce. Hello, I thank you for this very responsible as usual conversation that you're having with us. I really appreciate it. Um, one thing I want, I want to say something, two things. One thing quickly to what uh, Shamika just said. I have um, old friends from Minnesota that I'm kind of connected with. And one of them tried to give me with, with the okie doke last night. She was like, well, tell me, because I'm, I'm setting up a three-way call for her. Oh, it's setting up a, you know, a exposure for her. Well, then, and it didn't work out. We had to switch some things around. Well, tell me a little bit about it. I said, mm. I said, no, I love it. I said, but I want you to see this information. She said, oh, okay. Because she, you know, she knows what she's trying to do. You ain't trying to get me. Mm -mm. You're going to see this okay, information yeah. tonight. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, ma'am. Yeah. And so I'm sorry, I'll be eating too. So, so that's that. So that you're right. You really can't say nothing because they'll get you for the okie doke because you, they're your friend, but they, they trying to get in without even getting the full information. And then they, they'll count themselves out, mm -hmm. you know, when they need to see everything. Right. And the other thing I want to make a comment about is that I I love the conversation about selling the dream, which is really important. But what I see and what I'm exposed to is the people that are able to kind of steal the whole travel thing is because that's what they were doing already. So for them to be able to have, to me, in my mind, to, for them to be able to have those conversations, show all the travel, they can because they got, they got it and they've been traveling. They've been known for travel. So for yeah. other people that are not really traveling like that, yeah, that don't really work because you, like you said, you need the money. <laughs> so selling the dream is very more important versus mm -hmm. travel, especially if you're not known for traveling, especially if that's, that's something you do on a regular, it, it won't work. It just doesn't yeah. cut it. Exactly. So, divorce. I got a question for you because I I was listening to what you said. You you don't you were trying to set up the exposure for this woman. Why haven't you sent her the video? You know why I haven't you know why I, look? I'm gonna tell you why I'm not set up the video. Because I gave her the option for the video, and she really wants to see the information. So, like, I might have to call you on this one because it's me. It's two people, and I'm well, trying. Wait, to, I just heard you say something. Well, I gave her the option. Yeah. Who's running the business? You were her. That's true. That's true. Lord, she that's, even that's true. There were she... options if you didn't provide it. It's the same way. You and know I, what? You said that hold because on. hold on, okay. hold on, hold on. I'm sorry. I'm hold on. I'm glad you said it because that's the other part of what's wrong with a lot of people. You're letting other people dictate how you do business instead of you leading and doing the business. And it's the same thing with selling our $200 opportunity. Y'all be presenting it like they have an option to do IntelliTravel or Planet Marketing or both. I don't do that. It's a $200 opportunity to partner with me. And with that, you're getting two businesses. Yeah. Thing with the exposure. I, they don't know that we have five different ways to expose them to the business. Right. Listen, Very I'm going to send you a 10 minute video and then we're going to set up this call. When are you going to be available? Because I want to, I know you're going to have some questions after you watch this video. When are you available for a call? So we can get those questions as it. They get the video. Now, if after the video, right, if the 10 minute video did not close them, now you can invite them, say, listen, we got a webinar tonight at 7 p.m. that will, you know, a 30 minute webinar that will provide even more information. So you can get on that too. But you giving her options, I wouldn't do that. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a voice clip you. It's a little bit more to it, but what it is, yeah, yeah. Because I've been, you're right, you're right. But I'm a voice clip you because there's more to it. But yeah, I appreciate it because I I have been using the video a lot more, but I'll voice clip okay. you about it. Thank you. All right. <laughs> okay, we gonna keep going because I still have some more stuff I want to show you. Let's get into. I'm gonna share my screen. And I want to get into how for you to how you can invite people to your business launch. And this is this is your pre-business launch. So this is you just joined the business and your senior business partner is going to launch your business. And so your pre-launch should be your warm market. These are the people that you know.
and it's very simple. And I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna also share it in the chat. So, hold on. Oh, I think I just have to stop the share for a moment. I'm gonna share it in the chat so y'all can copy and paste it. Okay. So again, this is for the pre-launch brand new business partner. They're having a, a presentation, right? You haven't showed this on social media because this is for your warm market. And what you're gonna do is identify the people that you know in your warm market who could benefit from this business. And what you're gonna do is, let's do this. Everybody start a fresh sheet of paper. We're gonna start your list. Like I said, today we're gonna go into overtime, but it's gonna be worth it. Who rocking with me with overtime today? All right, good. Again, this is the brand new business partner. It's their pre-launch. Why do I say pre-launch? Because these are the people in their warm market that they are inviting to their pre-launch, not their cold market. These are friends, these are family, these are people that they know. It's not for them to invite cold market people to their pre-launch because we want them to fill their million dollar seats. Zara, you had a question? Um, I was trying to copy what you put in the chat, but it's not allowing me to do that. Okay, I'll, I'll post it in the um, Team Lux Platinum. It's already there, but I'll, I'm going to repost it under the streaming. Christina um, had a question. Um, she said she had a friend um, that she signed on and she only did plan at three months past. She goes me. And now she wants to drop out. She is the top of my genealogy. She is on credit hole. How can I get her to be removed? She is not working business and nest under her is someone who is. If she drops, who would take that place? The next person I sign on or my fiance who was next in line? Nobody. Unless she is willing to transfer and sign a transfer form to give that spot to somebody, she can't. You can't do anything about it. It's just a dead spot in her matrix. But I would say, Christina, is to get that person on the phone with your upline director so that your director can ask questions and see, you know, what's not working for her and maybe try to save her. All right. Does that answer your question, Christina? Okay, good. All right. Again, pre-launch. When we're doing a pre-launch for our brand new business partner, we tell them don't post this on social media. This is not for them. This is for your warm market. This is for your friends and family because the goal is for them to fill their million dollar seats. And so you want to ask them, who do you know that could benefit from this business opportunity? Don't think about who's going to say yes because that list will be like five people long or, or less, right? We don't want to ask the, who do you think is going to say yes to this opportunity? No, no, no. We don't make decisions for grown adults. We want to ask them, who do you know that could benefit from an opportunity like this? And you may need to lead them to help their brain start thinking. And then I'll say something like, children, do you think people who have children could benefit from this? Right, because children are expensive. Would y'all agree, right? Little kids, they want stuff, right? And if they in college, they need... So everybody that you know who has children, put them on the list. And then they start writing. And so I want y'all to start writing. Who do you know who has children? Um, people who have two jobs. Do y'all agree that people who work two or three jobs could benefit from this business opportunity? Yeah? Okay. Then they should go on the list. So 
So people with kids, people working two jobs. Maybe they work a full-time job and in the night they're doing DoorDash or Uber or Lyft. Quick question, who has at least five people on their list just from those two leads alone? Kimberly, Zara, Debbie, Angela. Just from those two leads, five people to prospect. All right, so let's assume I stop right there just for the sake of time. But y'all get where I'm going with this, right? with finding the people who could benefit versus people who are going to say yes, right? People who are just, just I'm going to go real quick, go through some other leads to help you start thinking. People that are in their 50s who are thinking about retirement, do you think they could benefit from this business? If, if there's an opportunity for them to retire in the next three to five years, as opposed to waiting to their 65 or 72, don't you think they'd want to know that there's an opportunity that can help them do that? right? So anybody generation X, they need to be on the list. I promise, I promise you generation X is hating working. They're tired of getting up early. They're tired of commuting. And the thought of working until 65 or 72 makes them want to slit their wrists. I promise you. How about the people that are retired? Those baby boomers that are retiring one every 20 seconds, do you think they could benefit from this business? Especially with inflation? They're on a fixed income. Fixed. That means that it don't matter how much their rent goes up, the grocery goes up, gas goes up, they have zero extra coming in. So anybody that you know who is retired or thinking about retirement, they need to go on your list because they could benefit. Whether or not they say yes or no, irrelevant. We don't control that. Y'all should have close to 10 people on your list already, just from those four. Children, multiple jobs, Gen X, and the baby boomers. People that are self-employed. Could they benefit from this business? Ladies, think about your hairstylist. What does retirement look like for a hairstylist who doesn't have a 401k, who works on cash? What they make today is what they can eat today. What does retirement look like? Because guess what? When they stop doing hair, they stop eating. How about those real estate agents? They don't have 401ks either. The moment they sell a property, they're unemployed until they can sell another property. So what does retirement look like for them? When I say self-employed, I'm talking about gig workers, other 1099 people. They are the magic in their business. If they stop doing, they stop eating. Constance? Yeah, I have my, the, the only that does my hair, she is a, a, she's an entrepreneur business owner. She has a salon, she has a rest, a family restaurant, and she bought, she purchased a, a whole building in the town that's across from me. So she's doing that. How, and I've been like, how can I approach her? Because she has a lot of overhead, Constance. Okay. Okay. She has a lot. Listen, her salon business. Mm -hmm. She got a lot of overhead. And if she stops doing, the money stops. How did her business do during the pandemic? You could just use the pandemic as a, an example. Salons had to close down. Restaurants had to close down. Okay. And even more so with the restaurant, that's even an even harder business. Those hours are long. It is hard. Mm -hmm. What restaurant have y'all gone by? Anybody go by a restaurant and they had a help on it sign? That's like almost every restaurant. Mm -hmm. These, they can't find good people who want to work. So guess what? If you can't find a waiter, guess who you going to be for the day? Waiter. Waiter. <laughs> and she does. She is. <laughs> if your cook calls out, guess who's going to be the cook for the day? 
And I promise you with restaurants, there's a very small profit margin. Because mm -hmm. guess what? The price of groceries have gone up for everybody. So just because they are an entrepreneur and they own a business don't mean they're making a big profit. Right. And guess what? Mm -hmm. Everything that you mentioned that she's doing, none of it is residual. None oh, of it's it. Not. It's not. Okay. So that's how you approach her. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. So now you got your list. Now, would y'all agree that everybody on planet Earth could use some extra income? Is that safe to say? Or is this one of those yes. who assume you're making an ass out of you and me? Nope, it's safe to say that. I think it's safe to assume that even Mr. Bradley, who's a multimillionaire, ain't he going after some more millions? You think Warren Buffett is looking for a way to make some more billions? You think Elon Musk is looking for a way to make some more? So next to everybody's name that you wrote down, I want you to put extra income. We're going to assume they could use some extra income, even if it's just to give it away to somebody else. Okay. And then next to extra income, you're going to put one, at least one other reason of how this business could benefit them. So if you said, oh, they have children, then put children. If you identify them as somebody who works multiple jobs, just put working two jobs. Would y'all agree that grandparents want to leave a legacy for their grandbabies? If they don't do nothing else, they want to make sure because they don't trust their kids. They're like, no, nope, I need to leave something for my grandbabies. <laughs> right? We know that. So they want to leave a legacy. So anybody that you know, who has grandchildren, put legacy down. We're going to put extra income and put legacy, grandkids. Because I promise you, if you peak a grandparent and you talk about this business can help them leave a legacy for their grandbabies, who's going to say, no, I don't want to look at that opportunity? Nobody. <laughs> Grandparents will do anything. For, I know my mom will do anything for my son. If he want it, she going to make it happen. Okay, so you got your list based on who you know could benefit from this opportunity. And then next to their name, you're going to put extra income. We're going to make that a, a general for everybody. And then next to that, what is that other reason that you identified of how this could benefit them, right? If you know they have health challenges and live in a two bedroom and they really need that one bedroom, that's the other reason. If you know they work in multiple jobs, if you know they gotta pay for daycare, daycare is expensive. If you know what their nightmare is, put that down as the reason. If you know they're getting ready to go, they're going through a divorce, put that down. If you know they're coming up on retirement and, and would love to be able to retire in three to five instead of 15 to 20, that's not like jail time. 15 to 20, <laughs> put it down. Okay, so y'all got that? Any questions on making the list? So now you know how to work with your new business partners on how to make their list for their business launch, right? So now when I go back to this script, and again, y'all can take a picture. Take a picture for right now. If you can't do the copy paste, and again, I will post this in our Team Lux Platinum. And I'll also post this in the comment section if you're watching this from YouTube. And by the way, if you are watching from YouTube, please like, subscribe, share. Thank you. Appreciate it. So let's look at the script for the pre-launch. Warm market. Now, number one, this is a phone call. This is not a text message. 
This is not you using Messenger. This is a phone call. They need to hear the excitement in your voice. Hey, Stephanie, how are you? Listen, I don't have a lot of time, but I wanted to reach out to you real quick. I recently started a new business project to make extra income that I'm super excited about. And I'm making a list. I'm making my list of people to invite to my private business launch on Saturday at 6 p.m. I'm only inviting a few of my close family and friends that can benefit from the information being shared. And I thought of you, Stephanie, because I know you've been working two jobs for a few years now. And to be honest with you, two jobs are for two people. Nobody should have to do that. Um, so I figured this could be something that you could use to eliminate that second job. Can I count on you to attend? Guess what Stephanie's gonna say? Stephanie, what would you say? She, she gonna say yes. Of course she's gonna say yes. And she's gonna be so grateful that I'm thinking about her having to work two jobs. She gonna, she gonna want to show up but not for me, for herself. Now, unless she loves working two jobs, 16, 20 hour days, she ain't gonna show up. But again, no one will say no to something that's in their own best interest. I didn't ask her to buy anything. I ain't say nothing about travel because it ain't about that. I thought of you. So now you see how why you have to put next to their name how it could benefit them because that is the key to the invitation. That is how you meet the need. That is how you're feeling the hurt. That is how you're solving the problem. That is how you're identifying their nightmare and selling them dream. Y'all got that? Is that easy? If you follow the blueprint, the blueprint you can't lose. Okay. So, let's switch gears. So now y'all know how to invite to a brand new business partner pre-launch, but let's talk about some of you that have been in the bear, in the business two years, three years, four years, five years, six years, seven years. Let's not call it a business launch. You've already launched your business. You've been in for years. So can we stop doing that? It's weird. Let's call it a business broadcast or something similar. Now, this can work for your cold or warm market right? Cold or warm. You're still doing the same thing. You're still identifying how the business could benefit them. And I've only tweaked this slightly. Hey, Stephanie, how are you? Listen, I don't have a lot of time, but I wanted to reach out to you real quick. The reason why you want to include this sentence is because you don't want the person to start trying to ask you a bunch of questions at that time on that call. You gotta be in a hurry or else they, especially with your warm market, they're gonna start at, well, girl, what is it? Just, just tell me what it is. You already told them, listen, I don't have a lot of time. I just wanted to reach out to you real quick. So that will stop them from asking you questions. I'm not sure if you are aware, right? They probably are aware because they've been watching you on Facebook. But we're going to assume, hey, I'm not sure if you are aware, but I started a business project in the largest industry in the world so that I could, here's where you got to share your why, so that I could retire within the next three years instead of working until I'm 72, if that's why you started. Or, you know, so that I could finally, you know, pay off these student loan debt sooner than later. So that I could quit my second job and have more time with my family so that I could leave a legacy for my grandchildren so that I could finally stop renting and buy my first house. So that I could have extra income coming in because I've now become the primary caregiver for my aging parents. so that I could finally put my bills on auto pay and stop struggling. So that I could finally build an emergency fund in case something happens. So that I could get out of debt. Whatever your why is, and just say it's going extremely well. And here's where I put the little asterisk. 
because you can end it right there or add this. If I know Stephanie lives in Texas, then I'm going to say it's going extremely well and I'm looking to expand in the Texas market. I'm working on a list of people to invite to my private business broadcast on Saturday at six o'clock. I'm only inviting people that I know could benefit from the information being shared. And I thought of you because I know that you're working two jobs and, you know, I'm building in Texas. Can I count on you to attend? Right? So this could work for your cold market or your warm market. Any questions? Some people don't like scripts, but I'm that person when I started this business, I needed a script because I did not know what to say. And I'm like, if someone could just tell me what, y'all telling me, okay, invite people, but I've never had to invite anybody to anything. So I don't know what it looked like. I can't duplicate something that I don't, I've never seen before. I don't know about y'all. Maybe y'all are smarter than me. I cannot duplicate I seen or experienced, right? So I, I needed a script and it's a script. That means personalize it. And I already showed you where you need to personalize that. So it makes it super, super simple. And so that you don't sound robotic because it's personalized to the person that you're speaking to. Devoris and then Constance. Just really quickly, I was just about to say that. And you know what's crazy is sometimes there's a, a kind of a shaming of people who need scripts. But like, if you don't know what to do, you don't know what to do. So you don't do nothing because you need something to start from. Then you can add your own to it and you won't need a script. But starting out, some people need that. But then it's so frustrating when you get in certain settings and people are like, I don't need no script. But, who need? but it's scripted. No, it's not necessarily scripted until you figure out what you're trying to say. You need something to start off with. Just like if you're baking a cake, you can't just go in the kitchen and put a cake together you need something to follow initially until you know what to do and then you add your own flavor to it put a little bit more of this a little extra you know what i'm saying so it's yeah. just so it's really good to have that and understand there is a need to it and not everybody needs one but the people who need it make it available for them right and the people who have an issue with it first of all what other people think is none of my business y'all write that one down i don't care what you think you know your name ain't on my checks don't let anybody shame you because you're using a script. So I'm here to tell you, your director, three-star director, six-figure income earner, Tanisha Burke, started with scripts because she didn't know what to say. And if you're working with a script, it's so much easier to get some duplication. But see, people are not educating people with the script. They're just saying, copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. No, you don't do that. Now you're spamming. But to get the concept of what you're trying to say, the message you're trying to convey, and I've showed you, didn't I say personalize it? Didn't I show you all the places you need to personalize it so it's not spammy? Listen, in Hollywood, when the writer writes out a movie, What's it called? A script. A script. Exactly. <laughs> it's called a script. And guess what the actor does when they receive it? They read it so that they can get the concept of what the role is. And they're going to do some ad living. They're going to tweak it. Right? They don't read it word for word. I promise you they don't. <laughs> okay? So don't let anybody make you feel bad that you need a script. This is how you get the duplication. Yeah, some people are very clever and don't need one because they're just a social butterfly. Maybe their past experiences and jobs have allowed them to just come up with stuff at the top of their head and they're really good at it. But how do you teach it? And it's a natural gift to them, right? Some people just have that natural social gift. 
but you can't teach a gift. That's your gift. But that might not be the gift of that uh, homeschooling mom you just enrolled who hasn't been in the workforce for 10 years. She can't do that. That's not her gift. That's your gift. But if you give her a script so she can understand the concept of what she should be, you know, the message she, she, she should be conveying, she could work with that. We need duplication. Okay. So those are the two scripts that I use to train my new business partners on how to invite to their pre-launch, their warm market, right? Give them those, ten, those tidbits, do the list with them. Start off, right? Just like I did it with you all to start you off. Guess what? Now I'm going to say, here's the play. Go make that list 50 people long. And invite them to look at the opportunity. Whether you invite them to tonight's webinar at 7 p.m., if that's what you want to do on the Planet Marketing Facebook page, or you invite them to look at the video that you can send immediately and expose them. Right, So it doesn't really matter whether you're inviting them to a video or a webinar or a hotel meeting or anything like that. It's about personalizing the invitation to show their need. That's it. And if y'all got that, you'll always get people who say yes to your invitation. The only reason they'll say no is if that time and day doesn't work for them. But guess what you got as a solution? A video. All right, Kim? Yes, I have a quick question. When do you use the eight minute and 37 second video, the newer video that's similar to the big picture? You talking about the preview ITA and preview rep? No, the, new, the newer one that's closer to the big picture with uh, Mr. Donald Bradley. It's eight minutes and 37 seconds. Let me look at the video and see what you're talking about. Securing the legacy Father's Day? No. What's the name of it, Kim? It's, um. it has, let me see. Look real quick. No. Came out a couple months ago, I believe. Let me see. That sounds like the, um, the original video we had, Tanisha. Remember they, they had put it out and you reminded us that that was the um the old original video. Oh yeah. I started using that. I really liked that video. Um but one I'm trying to think of the reason. There was some information in it that was dated. Okay, this one says the US 2023 planet. Yeah. Yep. I do like that video a lot um, and I was using it before and then I stopped using it I don't know why I stopped using it but there's some information in there that's dated that um, and I'd have to watch it again Kim to see but there's some information in there that was dated that showed that it was dated um, and I think that was the main reason why I stopped using it I thought it was a new video it's not new it's it's the original quote unquote big picture video before the big picture video came out. So just just focus on the big picture video. Um, the reason why I did like that, it explains things a little differently, and it's very um, universal, very universal with the people that are in it, and that's what I liked about it. Okay, thank you. That's clarity. <laughs> mm -hmm. Uh, Constance? Yeah, um, what I wanted to say about you know the scripts and everything like that, because we all know what we didn't know what to say. Remember, Tanisha, in the beginning, we didn't have those, um, the, the short videos, the ones that ended with, are you interested? Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people didn't know what to say. Mm -hmm. So they created those videos because yes. we didn't know what to say. Exactly. So now with this video, now you have um, some verbiage and stuff like that, that you're with the scripts and everything like that. It's basically the same thing. You're just calling the people and would that interest you? That's something you'd be interested to look at. It's basically the same thing with those early videos that we didn't know what this were. Like I said, we didn't know what to say. So they created those videos. Exactly, exactly. 
All right, so that's all I have for everyone. What, oh, Miss Delta? So I just wanna say, I wanna say to you, I thank you for creating the script because it helps me. I'm one of those people too. Number one, I, I can over talk and sometimes I can ramble on. So when I can, I can have something specific to say directly to an individual and not, you know, fumble my words and I can be specific, it helps me. So I say thank you for the scripts and, 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 and by you creating the scripts, it allows me like it, like you say, to personalize it, to you know, to 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 add I add a little something to you know, be a little bit more personable for them. So for me, I say thank you. And if you come up with some more, both I would I'm ready for it too. But, <laughs> uh, definitely, thank you. It's my pleasure. Anybody else have any questions? All right, I want feedback. Go ahead, Kimberly. To come in real quick, and I also want to say thank you as well because this training is is awesome, and I love the way your trainings kind of uh, re-emphasize the trainings that we have for on the corporate level, and particularly this training to me falls right into line when we're talking about um, going deep or going wide. Mm -hmm. Just even thinking about our uh, warm markets, you know, you still have to think about okay. Do I want to go deep with this person or wide? So I'm thinking about certain groups that I may have 10 people in. Do I want to go wide with them or do I want to allow them to go deep? Right. So thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Any other questions? Was today's training helpful? Did anybody have some aha moments and they ready to start inviting? Okay, give me, I want to hear three takeaways. Give three people to share their biggest takeaway from today's training that's truly going to help them um, move their business forward. I'll go. Okay, okay, okay. okay the, um, with the relaunch, because I remember, I don't know if it's a basic training, so they say when, when August comes, you know, you have your calendar ready for, you know, what you're going to do after the convention. And I said, okay, I'm going to take some days off, some Saturdays off, because I want to do some um, things at the restaurant, Friends Restaurant, and then the business broadcast invite. That was big for me, because not, it's not a relaunch, you know, I've been in it for many, many years. So a business, a biz, a, the business broadcast, and um, my people, my friends that are um, retired, how can I approach them? Because they're happy retired. They're saying mm -hmm. that they don't need any extra income, but I have one good friend, her son is, um, he's a, fun he's functional autistic and he's grown. What are you going to do? You know, I know he has a sister and things like that, but basically ask her the question, um, about the residual income and things like that to make sure that he's good, even though he gets social security and all that stuff, make sure he's good. Um, and then my retired friends um, and my two people, the people that have two jobs, it's a whole enough another approach that I can take to yes. them. And, yeah. you know, with my broadcast, my business broadcast. Excellent. 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 Anybody else? Talk to him about legacy. Delta, what'd you say? Oh, I'm, I didn't know if you heard me. I'm sorry. I was just going to say to the um, young lady that was speaking, she was saying he was retired. He feels as though that he has, you know, he, he's fine with money and things like that. If you want to, you know, attract him, talk to him about legacy, because if he have grandchildren and things like that, if he's fine on the on the money aspect of it, that's fine. But let me let me uh, talk to you about leaving a legacy for those grandchildren or whomever for your family, and that that way that could be something that you know because whatever he whatever he whatever it is he's doing, he doesn't have a, a legacy or anything in place, so that will assist him in having that legacy. Right, exactly. That's what I was talking about with her um, son that's autistic and yeah. her daughter. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Yep. Exactly. Anybody else? What's your biggest takeaway from today's training? Kimberly? I have one. It's a, um, a mindset change going from uh, thinking about this as a product, which could be travel to a service, which could be uh, dealing with a person's uh, problems, their hurt, and et cetera. So that's, that's good. major. Good, mm -hmm. good. Anybody else? Nobody else learned anything. Oh, go ahead. I, I got it. <laughs> yes. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm sorry I'm so late. Oh, but I um uh, 
listening to your prospects. Listen first. Hear, mm -hmm. hear the cry. Because everybody's crying about something. And mm -hmm. once we get the cry, we hear the cry, like you said, um, find the need, meet it, find the hurt, heal it, and find the problem, solve it. And let their nightmare turn into their dream. You can sell them their dream. So that's what I learned. Just listen to them and then give them what they're looking for. Let this, this is the answer by the grace of God. Okay. Absolutely. I'm telling you, y'all get that. You got it. Constance. So we added a letter to that D. So now it's formed F O R M D D. Stands yeah. When you were saying that, I was like, I said, whoop, I missed the letter. <laughs> we did that last week. Miss Rhonda. Yes. I put in the chat, but also just want to say thank you for your time, your energy, your nuggets, your passion that you're giving us. I mean, you don't have to. And for that, I say thank you so much. But what my takeaway is, you know, everyone is a, everyone ask everyone, but know their why, like you said, uh, be able to know so you can tailor your script and your conversation to their why, mm -hmm. because everyone is different. And some are alike. And so knowing what that looks like, having the script that you provided and, and really being able to not have fear that was on the call last night, but not having fear to be able to um, uh, pre prevent you from asking everyone. Exactly. And, but, but no, you could follow them on Facebook and see, or you can know them personally. You can hear of some, 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 something that they've said that would trigger you to say, oh, wow, this may be someone that really needs to be a part of this. Exactly. Exactly. You got it. You got it. If you know their why, there's nothing to be afraid of because <laughs> you're coming straight exactly. to what they need. That's good. Thank you for sharing, Rhonda. Delta, Absolutely. closing comment? Yes. Um, my, my takeaway is um, to, first of all, get out of my way and don't throw the warm market, your family away. <laughs> I laugh about it. Don't throw them away. Just, just kind of, you know, keep them, keep them in, you know, back over in the corner somewhere. And when you, you need, and, and let allow your actions to show them what is going on with you financially and how this business is benefiting you. So that, that's my, my takeaway. It, 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 it will be my actions to show them. Exactly. Exactly. Take your family off the market. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's not for you right now, but you're going to hear this again from someone else. And just remember, I shared it with you first. So if you ever decide to get started with this business, make sure you come back to me. Just take them off the market, leave the door open. And last but not least, just please remember, show grace to people. Everybody is in a different season. And this, this might be their season. It's your season to share the information. That's why you are a planet marketing rep. That's your season, sharing the information. However, they may be in a season of just receiving the information right now, just receiving information. And guess what their next season will be? Action. This might not be their action season. This just might be their receiving of information season. And that's okay. Be okay with that. And if you're speaking to enough people, you will, it won't even bother you. You're like, I got 40 other people on this list. I am not focused on this one. But if you're, if you're not, if, if you're, I could always tell when people are not exposing enough people because they're focused on this one person they had a conversation with and what that person said or didn't say or promised, didn't, you know, answer the phone. You, how do you even have time to focus on that one that didn't show up for their three-way call when you should have a list of like 70, 80, 90, 100, 300, 500 people. It's a running list. And you focus on that one? That just shows me you're not talking to enough people. All right. So thank you all for the over, over time. Oh my goodness. This was a two, almost a two hour training, but I do think it was a very responsible and needed training. And I, I think I'm going to add this video to the 15 day quick start list. So that when you do set up your new business partner's um, uh, launch, they can watch this video to really understand how to invite. So I think I'm going to do that. So thank you all for participating. Love y'all. I'm going to Mexico this weekend. So I will see you on Tuesday. All right. Bye, everybody.
Enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. Have a great day, everyone. Hey.